Nashville, Tennessee. Located in the heart of the southern United States, one could argue that this city along the Cumberland River is the undisputed birthplace of country music. You won't find a city more accessible and authentic than this one. And this episode is a special one, friends. It marks the ninth and final episode for this year and the end of season one. A journey that started in Paris and has taken us all over the United States and Europe. Frankly, it's been an incredible year. And make no mistake about it, we aren't done yet. Stay till the end of this episode for a preview of upcoming destinations planned for season two, including a trailer for the first episode which begins in Singapore. That's right, next year we're headed to Asia. But for now, off to the south and Nashville, Tennessee. The term travel vlogger gets thrown around a lot these days. There's thousands on YouTube, always trending on Instagram, and can be confusing for those seeking a taste of reality. I'm Mike Johnston. I write for fun, I travel out of necessity, and these are my travel diaries. Established in 1937, the Nashville Airport is part public, part military. Its current decor landed in about 1987, and that probably won't surprise you after arriving here. It adequately services just under 600 daily arriving and departing flights. And as airports go, it gets people in and out of town efficiently. This is a very short trip for the kiddo and myself, just 48 hours. We are in town for the 53rd annual Country Music Awards. So, we are excited and ready for a good time. Of course, upon arrival, the weather isn't exactly what we were hoping for. Welcome to cold and rainy Nashville. Well, the weather didn't get much better. Cold rain turned to wind and snow overnight. So, let's eat. Located in the heart of downtown Nashville, on the corner of Broadway and 4th, sits Merchants. The building itself dates back to 1892 and has a rather notorious history, among them the location of a post-Civil War casino and brothel. The bistro here boasts high-end hipster cocktails and classic comfort food, both delivered with impeccable service. The kiddo and I will begin with homemade chips and baked pimento cheese, and if you think this makes your heart skip a beat, let's move on to Bacon Mac with white cheddar cheese and panko. Or the famous Johnny Cash Chili, which correctly should be outlawed and would not be complete without some Southern hot butter cornbread. Let me tell you friends, on a cold day in the South, this is just about as good as it gets. Nashville is the capital of the U.S. state of Tennessee, which is likely why it is the most populated as well. Known as Music City, Nashville is a town with its foundations firmly built on music. And I assure you, friends, the caliber of entertainment here is second to none. Nashville's fiercest collection of female musicians, Side Piece, is a band of badass women who are often on the road supporting some of Nashville's biggest stars. They are the backbone of the working musician in Music City. Collectively, these ladies have toured with Marin Morris, Sugarland, Alabama, Big and Rich, Shania Twain, Shakira, the list goes on. Be sure to look them up when you're in town. The Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville is one of the world's largest museums and research centers dedicated to the preservation and interpretation of American vernacular music. At least that's what the brochure says. Basically, it's the cultural shrine for everything country music, y'all. 
and like church on Sunday, it's a must visit while you're in town. Located in the epicenter of the city's core, a block from the popular Honky Tonks on Broadway and across the street from Bridgestone Arena, you can't miss this place. It houses over 2.5 million priceless artifacts, including countless recordings, photographs, stage costumes, and musical instruments. There's even exhibits for a few famous Southern automobiles. Maybe you'd like to take a look at one of Elvis's gold-trimmed Cadillac limousines. Well, you can do that. I must admit, for any music fan, country or otherwise, the history here is simply amazing. There is so much to see and experience, make sure you plan a full day just for this place. The museum has truly earned its nickname the Smithsonian of country music. With a footprint of roughly 350,000 square feet, its collection is seriously unrivaled. We'd love to stay longer, but we are in town for the big event, and for the kiddo, this should be something special. Now, really, this trip was all about the kiddo. She has ambition to be a musician one day. Her mother was a singer, and I dabbled in percussion back in a former life. And, well, I felt justified to take her out of school for a few days and treat her to the culture of Nashville and the longest-running annual music awards program on network television. This requires, of course, proper preparations. Of course, I can't really show you the event itself, but well you get the point this trip although shorter than my typical travel was very special it was an opportunity to spend time with the kiddo and together experience something that we both have in common, music. I firmly believe that the enormous teaching and learning opportunities presented when traveling makes it the single most important parenting activity we can do. And this past year, I've been fortunate enough to feature the kiddo in three out of the nine episodes produced for season one which was the goal this year. Nine long form travel diary episodes that allowed me to experiment with a narrative format and potentially find my voice. And boy, have I learned a lot and there will be some changes to next season's format. Now I'm gonna be taking a break through the holidays to rest and relax a bit, but then I plan to kick off season two in March of 2020 with all new destinations. We will be going back to Germany this time Berlin, to explore its creative arts and food culture. We'll also be heading back down south to New Orleans to enjoy their famous beignets and learn more about Cajun culture. And of course, we'll also go back towards Seattle, but this time exploring more of the Pacific Northwest and maybe search for a Bigfoot or two. But what I'm most excited about is starting the season off in one of my favorite places on Earth, Singapore. Here's a quick preview. Season two of The Travel Diary starts in Singapore, March 2020. I hope to see you there. In the meantime, if you haven't already, be sure you check out the rest of The Travel Diaries from this past season. And if you're new to this channel and you've made it this far, please consider subscribing and liking this video. It helps me tremendously. And for those of you who have been with me all along, thank you so much for making season one amazing. I really appreciate you. 
Till next time, safe travels, friends. Bye.